Here is a 2024 Subaru Legacy Sport in crystal white. Last year, we got a refresh for the front fascia. The grille was tweaked with the headlamp assembly and the fog lights. The Sport is going to have a sport tuned suspension and the turbocharge underneath the hood. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. In the front, you're gonna have the red that is going to outline the horizontal bars with the magnetic gray that brushes into the steering response LED headlights and daytime runnings. And in the lower, you'll have the C structure that was reconfigured last year for the fog light assembly. 2.4 liter flat four cylinder boxer engine. This is turbocharged, producing 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque paired to the Linear Tronic CVT transmission, symmetrical all wheel drive, and standard four wheel independent suspension with 18 inch magnetic gray alloy wheels. When you're pairing this with a sport tuned suspension, vehicle dynamic control, active torque vectoring, these are not going to be standard features, including that all wheel drive system. Honda doesn't even offer it for the Accord and going into Toyota or Kia, none of them will have the all wheel drive system either. The linear Tronic CVT transmission in this, and I can already hear people in the comments, well, it's a CVT. The nice thing about Subaru is it's gonna mimic an eight-speed automatic transmission, so you have a shift pattern even though it's still gear ratio. The rear was not reconfigured, so the carryover C-structure LED tail lights, the gloss black is going to highlight it, and on the lower, you'll get dual exhaust outlets, so it has the performance look and attributes similar to a Camry in the back. Quick release, going into 15.1 cubic feet of storage, bag holders in the front, underneath the floor you're going to have the jack and underneath that is the spare tire this is a fold-out bag so you can put your groceries for different compartment spaces so they don't fly everywhere split fold the rear bench in the back at a 60 40 split that's going to increase the cargo if i can open it there we go to the legacy this boxer engine we got to go inside start it up so if you hear that exhaust though Way power seat adjustment for the driver, four way manual adjustment for the passenger, heated front seats, headroom, and leg room. Because it's a sport trim, we get the aluminum pedals. It's going to be a little bit more sport derived. You have the aluminum look with the contrast stitch in red that goes into the large 11.6 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio, put it into reverse and we get a reverse camera, dual climate control settings, which you can either do through the touchscreen or you actually have physical buttons here. The same thing for the volume and to turn on and on the sound system, which makes it a little bit more easier. Area here that you could store your cell phone with, with a USB and the electric park brake, gloss black around the leather wrap for the gear lever and the key fob for the Legacy. It's going to be soft to touch, opens up for the first tier, and you have some storage that you could put some notepads, I guess, open up again, and that's the deeper storage pocket with the 12 volt. Three spoke steering wheel, multi-function with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assisted, and we get the paddle shifts. 4.2 informational display that can go through an array of information for the driver, including your SI driving modes. The dashboard and the door panels can figure in together, and I like that they put this little touch here because you got a storage compartment here for the passenger. Kind of wish that they added a little storage here, but it still fits good. Door panel is going to have everyday materials, and then it's gonna be soft to touch where it needs to be one touch up and down for all the windows with gloss black for the tips. Smaller storage pocket that you can fit a beverage holder in the Harman Kardon sound system with a moonroof and auto dimming rear view mirror. For the back seats, headroom and leg room. And what I have done is to really illustrate how much extra storage you get with the Legacy. Three compartments, a smaller cell phone, a larger cell phone or a laptop, whatever you want can more or less fit behind both the driver and passenger seat, air vents, USB ports, and armrests with cup holders. The door is going to have the same materials that's found in the front so nothing is stripped out, even putting that touch of gloss black right there for the window switch. About the same size storage pocket with 
maybe a medium sized flask that you could fit. Scooting into the center, the floor isn't completely flat. You could put your feet like this, but it's gonna be undesirable because look how much room you have to rest. And it's gonna be about the same here too. So your legs will be sitting upward, sharing feet, butt and shoulder space. And headroom is going to be a little bit more tight unless you sit back like this. So it's gonna be a little bit more uncomfortable for someone over six foot tall. 76 horsepower more than the engine options that is underneath this trim, giving us 260 horsepower, which is quite a bit in 260 or 277 pound feet of torque with a sport tuned suspension. So all in all, you're getting a lot of value when you're considering what this vehicle has as a package. Because if you go into Toyota, you wanna to get a Camry, say you wanna get the V6, you're gonna to have to go to the XLE, in which the price is going to be about 36 to $37,000, and you're not going to get the same amenities that you're getting in this with Subaru's EyeSight, which is one of the best for safety. Show you a little performance. <laughs> it's on point, man. It just kicks you back. I've driven the non-turbo and it's okay for a day in and day out use, but if you're wanting to have a little bit more of a kick to it, this is the trim level you want to go to. The premium is okay. I would option that if I'm looking to get this 11.6 inch screen because the base is going to have a dual seven inch touch screen setup and I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm not a huge fan of the big screens either, but it actually configures into the dash instead of sitting upright like other automotive industries. Here we go. It's immense. The torque and power that you're getting out of this boxer flat engine. And to go in and out, you're not having any issues. The steering is light. The windows are large. They do look larger outside. It doesn't have a sleek profile image, but it is a Subaru. So you're expecting it to be a little bit more loud. Standard all wheel drive. None of the cars that's comparable to this is going to offer that. Honda doesn't even offer all wheel drive as it is. And when you go into the V6 variant on Toyota, you can't get four wheel drive. It's a smooth ride, the seat cushions are good, you have plenty of space. Starting with the pros and cons though, we're gonna go to the con. I don't like that we're in a sport trim and this is the, the level that starts this turbo engine and we're still not getting power seat adjustment for the passenger seat. Not a huge fan of the exterior for the back. The front is looking a lot more dynamic since they've done the refresh last year. And a pro is when you get the Sport this year, you now get Harman Kardon sound system standard. It's not as good as a Bose sound system, but it's definitely an upgrade from the four and six speaker setup that comes with the Legacy. It's not going to be as quiet. I will say that Honda will take that it's going to be the most quiet and that one will get a little bit better in PGs, but it's also a hybrid. This one, you're not sacrificing in fuel and you get this. Another pro, the Linear Tronic CVT transmission. It mimics an eight speed automatic transmission. So you're not going to feel like it's at a high RPM all the time. You can actually use the pedals and it will shift to a pattern in which it feels a little bit better than that CVT. Now to show you the 260 horsepower and how much fun you can have with this linear Tronic CVT and the sport suspension. For a vehicle that's not a perfect 50-50 weight distribution, it's doing a good job. Feels athletic. Feels sporty. And it's composed otherwise. So I like how you can transition from a sport drive into an everyday, and it's not something that's going to be like 
so touchy because of the turbocharged, even though it's a smaller engine. Starting to get a little wheel happy. But that's to be expected. The all wheel drive system is working good. It's not a sports car, but it has a sporty drive to it. This will be more sporty than the new Honda Accord Hybrid. Toyota's pretty athletic, especially when you go into the TRD, because they do lower the ride, they do change the suspension. Nothing, unfortunately, to the V6 engine, but you have 301 horsepower. Torque is more here, so you will go back a little bit more so, but I feel like you can get a little bit more happy taking some corners with the Camry than this. And even though it's a sport tune suspension, it's going to be one of the most forgiving. Honda will be the most smooth, but you're expecting that because everything was refreshed last year. Going against Kia, that will be the more harsh ride. But for a day in use, the steering's light, so you can maneuver in and out. You can do a little bit of some corners, as you noticed. I wouldn't go too crazy with this variant, but when you're going into the turbo, you feel a huge difference in the power underneath it. Going underneath this trim, you're gonna start losing features, and I would recommend staying around the premium to limited trim so you can at least option some of these features in the vehicle. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like, and I'd like to thank Subaru Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2024 Subaru Legacy Sport for our car review.